Welcome, travelers, to my realm of nightmares. Allow me to be your personal assistant. Come in, take a seat, get comfortable. For when you step into my realm, there's no stepping out. I've always preferred my own company. I guess I've always viewed other people as the enemy. I was the same way in school. And I guess this is what affected my performance. I was never really comfortable in class, surrounded by my peers. I never exactly felt at ease. After six years, I left with results that did me a little justice. And I know that when thinking about it, it comes down to my aversion to all things social. Of course, this just made things like that a little bit harder. When it came to finding a job. I had jobs. But none which I could really consider my own. I spent a few weeks stacking shelves. A month or so. In an office. And one long summer. So many years ago. I sold insurance plans. From a call center. Each time the position was fleeting. I was either not front of the house material. I was not approachable. Or, I was simply not that good. Fancy that, being told that you are not good enough to sell insurance. Each time I failed, each time a position did not work out, I naturally did what I found most comfortable. I drifted. I drifted from job to job, from home to home, desperately seeking out my place within a world that I felt so desperately separated from. Money for bills became money for booze. Time and work became time at home. I quickly found that my anchor, which I used to have in life, had somehow become detached, washed away, and submerged beneath the waves of time. And it was at this point that I first saw the advert. Unique position offered for unique individual. Night watchmen required urgently. Five nights a week, the ability to work under your own initiative is a must as this is a solitary work role. Submit your CV today for consideration. Solitary? That word leapt out from the page. I could be alone? I reasoned. I am alone anyway, I thought. What is the worst that could happen? Little did I know that the advert was a lie. There would be no solitude offered during those cold December nights, stuck inside the empty and barren halls of Drayton Pass. The hospital was once a monument, a beacon of hope constructed hundreds of years ago to help tackle the growing epidemic of the plague. It had once been proud, it had once been clean, but now it was no more than decay. Its uses had diminished when the outbreak subsided, so it had been repurposed to assist those with mental health issues. Unfortunately, though, the affliction of the mind was not completely understood back then, which meant that it was nothing more than a place to hide all society's ills. I had researched a building prior to my first night. I did know of the horrors concealed within the history of its walls, but Drayton Pass was just an empty building now. At least, that was what I thought. I moved slowly up the darkened halls towards the building as the harsh winds and rain lashed at my face. Drayton Pass stood tall and foreboding ahead, its black and empty windows concealing its horrific history quite nicely from anyone who would happen to pass. Not that anyone would pass. The hospital was at least five miles from anywhere, and it was completely concealed by the forest of tall trees which surrounded it. 
During its early years, it would have been suited perfectly to serve as a small town of Drayton, located just down the hill. With the birth of the Industrial Revolution, the town had suffered greatly. Families moved to the big city in search of work, and eventually, the once flourishing town was reduced to a shell of its former self. As I neared the old metal gate, I noticed my new boss waiting patiently just outside. You took your time. <sighs> he sighed, pulling his coat tighter around his body. Never mind. Just call me if you see anything. Not that you will, of course. Drayton is a peaceful place, James. She will take care of you. Enjoy your stay. With that, he handed me a big set of keys and turned to leave, disappearing into the blackness of the night. Welcome to Drayton Pass. The hours came and went fairly quickly. The building had been stripped and torn apart. Some of the damage taking place over the years, but the vast majority of it coming from the ongoing refurbishment. The builders had now all finished for the winter and would not be returning until the new year. Various tools and ladders remained still in the silent rooms and the windows rattled in their rusted frames. Thankfully, the room which would become my post was well furnished and contained a radio, which was more than I could have hoped for. My role was simple. I was to watch. What exactly was I to watch? It wasn't clear. I assumed, like most buildings under construction, I would be guarding it against drunks and addicts looking for a place to spend the night. Realistically, it would probably just be kids looking to explore an old, creepy building at night. It didn't matter, though. No one would be making the trip to Drayton Pass tonight. Not within this storm. I was all alone tonight, and that was exactly how I liked it. I look up at the small clock above the door. It says 3.13 in the morning. The noise of the storm outside was comforting. The sound of the rain as it struck against the roof was peaceful. The noise bled beautifully into a lullaby, which hung heavily on my eyelids. The room was warm, and the radio played quietly in the background. I leant back in my chair and allowed my eyes to close. I could sleep. It was just me. I was alone. Suddenly, the sound of the radio crackling forced my eyes to open. The small radio hissed for a second before continuing on with its song. But then, after a few more seconds, it hissed again. <sighs> Slightly annoyed, I pushed myself to my feet. What the hell is wrong with this thing? I moved in and picked the radio up. As I did, the song completely stopped and the room filled with nothing but the abrasive noise. I sighed and began to fiddle with the dials. As I did, the static cut out for a second. I moved the dials again. As I did, a sound could be heard coming through the speaker. I moved the dial again. As I did, a single word cut through the harshness of the static, piercing the vicious noise and shattering my naive illusion of solitude. It was clear, and it was precise, but more importantly, it was my name. My heart began to beat faster as my hands shook. After a few seconds, my fingers became numb, and the radio slipped from my grasp. It fell from my hands, crashing loudly against the floor as it shattered into pieces. And then, I just stood, frozen, on the spot, wrapped in nothing but the silence and the emptiness of Drayton Pass. After a few moments, the night would only get worse. The sound of a bucket being kicked over somewhere down the hall caused me to jump on the spot. I scurried to retrieve the torch from the table that had brought its beam up quickly. Illuminating the hall just outside of the open door to my room, 
The hall seemed to extend further than it had before, almost seeming longer and much more dangerous than the first time I had moved through it. The light from my torch lit the walls, highlighting their age as its paint visibly flaked in chunks. I moved the beam down, the filthy and cracked tiles gleaming brightly, and then I moved the beam up, focusing the light down the end of the hall in front of me. In the darkness, just within sight, a bucket rolled out from an open doorway before sitting silently in the center of the corridor about 20 meters or so away. The air suddenly felt different. The mood had changed within the rotten recesses of Drayton Pass. The arteries of corridors and hallways which lined the decrepit old building were once home to nothing but the spiders, but tonight the mood had changed. The air was thick and the smell of old wood was almost suffocating. It enveloped me as I stood there, shaking, choking the life from my lungs while stifling my breath. I do not know how, and I do not know why, but I just felt as if something wrong awaited me somewhere down the hallway, hidden in the darkness and concealed by the shadows. My legs trembled as my heart threatened to burst from my chest. The mood had changed. Calm down, you idiot! I struggled to slow my breathing as my mind raced. It's just some kids. Do your bloody job. After a few moments, I managed to collect my thoughts, and I turned and retrieved my handheld radio from the table by the door. I took a few deep breaths. <sighs> steadied my hand slightly, and then I walked out into the darkness. I could see the bucket. It had somehow managed to end up perfectly in the center of the hallway. I moved the beam of light to the right of it, locating the open doorway from where it had rolled from. Hello? I said, my words bouncing from each tight and claustrophobic wall. Is there anyone there? Silence. In the distance, I could hear the rain as it continued to pelt the archaic roof above me. Hello? A flash of lightning struck outside, briefly blessing the darkness with its white glare. Is there anybody there? I realized that my hand had begun to tremble. The beam of light from my torch danced with a spasm over the open doorway. I was sucking at the air even though I could no longer feel my lungs. <laughs> Hello? Slowly, I took a few more steps towards the open doorway. I could see slightly through the crack in the hinges, but all that was on the other side was more darkness. I took another few steps. As my heart strained, You're not supposed to be in here. I whispered softly, secretly hoping my words would go unheard. So, just come out, please. I stopped, just short of the door. I gazed through the opening, looking into the blackness, looking into my soul. For a long time, nothing happened. I did not move and nothing came charging from the void to harm me. The rain felt as if it had stopped, and time now seemed to slow to almost a grinding halt. Nothing is there. No one is there. Suddenly, a hiss from my radio shattered the silence. The static was there again. I willed my hand to move as I retrieved the handset from my pocket bringing it up to my face to listen. Through the static, through the burst of noise, I could hear it. It was a voice. Without thinking, my finger clicked down on the button, and I spoke aloud. Hello? Almost immediately, the dark and demonic voice responded. James. 
And that is when the sound started. It was metal on metal. The sneering and sharp sound that you would expect if you were to run a blade against another. It tore and it pierced the night, burning through any notion of silence while filling my body with an unfathomable dread. My blood boiled hot as my arms shook. It was coming from the room. I could not move. All that I could do was stare stupidly into the nothingness before me as the noise grew in intensity. It ripped and cut at the air, defiling the halls with its sick and nasty nature. Tears formed in my eyes as my hands tightened around my torch. The voice crackled through the radio. It's a natural tone. Slicing dirty through the static. Welcome home. My mind throbbed as the horror continued to unfold all around me. The walls felt as if they were moving closer so quickly. Threatening to trap me within for all of eternity. All reason and all logic has escaped me as the voice began to chuckle. <laughs> it's guttural laugh. Through the hiss of the noise. And all that I could manage to do was to stare stupidly ahead. Gradually, in the blackness of the room in front of me, I began to make out something. There was one, and then there were two. Two bright eyes, as clear as day. They were looking at me, staring at me, consuming me. Even though I could make out no mouth, I knew that it was smiling. James. I dropped the radio and ran. I cannot recall the winding path which led me out. Only that it did eventually lead me back into the cold wetness of December. And it was here that I remained for the rest of the night. Tears soaking my eyes while the night drenched my face. I could not process what had happened to me. I mean, after all... What had happened to me? There was so much left unanswered. So many questions swirled through my mind. And nothing could calm me. Hours passed and I never even moved. The sun finally blessed the morning sky with its warm and welcoming glory. Through the haze of confusion, I just about managed to spot my manager moving up the hill towards me. He will not understand. He will not believe you. Morning, James. How was your first night? His lips struggled to move as my words spoke for themselves. It was fine, sir. It was fine. I somehow knew that I had to come back. I did not know where the feeling had come from or what it even meant. I just knew it was there. It had always been there, deep within my heart hidden by years of drifting and decades of hiding. It was there. I would be coming back. I would be seeing Drayton again. After all, how could I not? I was finally home. rain. Heavy drops of cold splashed against my cheeks as I sat within the darkness, an indescribable shape of blackness wrapping itself eloquently around me, suffocating my life whilst choking at my world. The trees swayed and the earth moved, their motion doing little to ease the fizzle of apprehension that had been building within me for a while now. Time ticked by as each breath burned. Growing from somewhere inside was the thought, the nasty little question that frayed at my existence. Its thread damaged, yet unyielding, as the strings between my reality tore at the seams. What the hell am I doing back here? A horror cliche. I spoke aloud. My voice no more than a whisper in the night. You too.
realize that is what you are, right? Nothing more than a badly written cliché. I paused for a second, half expecting a response. The bloody horror cliché. Drayton Pass had been waiting. It has always been waiting. Ever since that first night, I had become lost. I had become trapped within two completely different, yet incredibly painful ideas. Each were direct and obviously contrast of one another. Logic and passion. Thought and feeling. Planning and instinct. On one hand, I had experienced the unexplainable within the empty, desolate halls of Drayton, and it had terrified me. It was clear that something was in there, and it was clear that something was watching. But at the same time, I had still felt a compulsion, an odd sensation of longing, which seemed to fester from somewhere deep and hidden within. I wanted to be there. I needed to be there. I was finally home. And as I sat alone outside of the old decrepit building, desperately deciding whether money was worth the price of curiosity, a stark realization materialized from within the empty space inside my fragile mind. I am the cliché. Just as the classic horror movies that come before me, I was being chased. At this moment in time, however, as I sat within the rain, bathed in the stars, and awash within the bleeding black of the night above, there was no immediate danger to speak of, but I was acutely aware of the fact that there very well could be if and when I eventually decided to venture back inside. My second shift was about to begin, and I had to make a choice. The mask-faced killer from Scream, Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, Freddy from Elm Street. Take your pick. It did not matter the specific applicator of my demise, only that the possibility of danger inside was clear and physically apparent. And, just like the protagonist that had come before me, I had a simple choice. Would I run straight out through the front door, out into the street and outside to summon the required help in order to save my own life? Or would I climb those proverbial stairs, move upward, deeper into the house, and relinquish all hope in order to satisfy a tried and tested trope? In that moment, the question was meaningless. After all, with all my accomplishments considered... With all my actions, with all my memories, my moment, and my thoughts, my life was nothing more than that of a two-dimensional character. In that moment, surrounded in the rain and soaked in fear, I knew my own self-worth. I deserved to climb those stairs. As I sat on the rain-soaked steps outside of the old hospital, quietly lost when they see of my own thoughts, any illusion of choice I may have once had, quickly dissipated along with the approaching two words as they made their way beautifully through the turmoil of the storm. Eve then James? My head rose as my manager approached. Quite the night for it. My lips moved almost instinctively. Quite a night for what? He paused a few meters from me his confusion carrying in an obvious sort of way. Easy, James. Your job. It's quite a night for you to do your job, don't you think? That is, unless you've grown tired of being paid already. Still, you wouldn't be the first. The first. His words carried a meaning that he had obviously not intended to convey. The first, sir? What do you mean? <laughs> he chuckled in response. Delusions of grandeur, young man? Do you think that you were the first and only highly qualified individual tasked with guarding this place? The pedestal's high. You must watch out for that fall. I shook my head and sighed. <sighs> what? What is wrong with you? You haven't already let this place get under your skin, have you? I mean, don't get me wrong, we do have all the ingredients, 
required for a badly written horror story right here. A convenient storm, check. A creepy, long abandoned hospital, ditto. And you, a mysterious young man with a dark and secret past. Forget about it. All that we're really missing here are a few well-timed lightning strikes to really accentuate the theme. And then we will be golden. Also, if we throw in the dark and foreboding basement or two, then we really have a plot device on our hands. James, look, seriously, I'm just kidding. You really do need to just relax and try and focus on the task at hand. I nodded my head. I will, sir. He smiled in response. Oh, actually, it does remind me. Check out the basement tonight, will you? We've had reports of things moving around down there. It's probably just the teens. You know how they are. It's always just the teens. Perfect. Yes, of course, sir. Again, he smiled. Enjoy your second night here, James. And do try not to let the setting get to you. I really don't fancy having to advertise again. This place will be the death of me. Excuse me? I said enjoy your second night. And with that, he was gone. No more than a silhouette of a person as he disappeared back down the hall and eventually out of sight. Amongst the tall trees that showed a Drayton so perfectly from the world around it. Why does he even bother coming up here? Second thoughts meant nothing. The building was still here. I was still here. And deep down, really deep, I guess I already knew that I would be going inside. After all, there was still too much left unanswered. There were still too many questions that hung hauntedly within. What had happened? What was in there? How did not know my name? With the heavy iron key in hand, I stepped towards the door and prepared for my second night. Welcome to Drayton Pass. The aging halls and winding paths were just as I'd left them the previous night. Empty, but no less terrifying. A musty, dark smell hung throughout the air, and the very idea of light was nothing but an illusion within the claustrophobic turns and never-ending pathways. Somewhere deep within the dark was my post, my room, my solitude. I clicked the torch on and allowed the reassuring beam to guide my path. I would not be lingering in the entrance hall for any longer than necessary. Within the blackness, salvation awaited me. Lightning struck loudly outside as I began to make my way. I tried to resist, but a panic smile forced its way across my lips. How well timed. Before long, I had finally made it. I had encountered nothing but emptiness in my path. The halls were hollow, and the rooms, which lined with corridors on either side, were empty and long abandoned. The ground was still littered with tools, no more than fossils of works planned for a time long forgotten. I even had to purposely step over the bucket, which still stood defiantly in the middle of my path, steadfast in its placement. A subtle little reminder of what had occurred the night prior. The walls of the hospital were wrapped in silence. The thick abyss of nothing only breaking ever so slightly. For the hail of wind that blew intermediately through the cracks in the foundation, the whole building was darkness. My room, however, well, that was pure light. Pieces of the broken radio were still strewn across the floor when I entered. Obviously... I was the only person either brave enough or stupid enough to set foot inside of the building. The light within the room was thankfully still working. And the chair I had almost fallen asleep in the previous night, thankfully, still looked just as comfortable. I smiled as it slid down into its softness. Screw the basement. Again, a smile slid across my lips as I closed my eyes. I am staying put. And just like that, my consciousness faded and my eyes closed. The static from the radio startled me 
and I opened my eyes. Again, the handheld receiver that my manager had given to me sparked loudly across the room. Wearily, I rubbed my eyes and retrieved the radio from the table next to me. I brought the receiver up as my eye caught sight of the time on the small clock just above the door. It was 3.13 in the morning. Hello? I spoke, clicking the button down. Who is it? A few seconds of silence followed before my manager finally spoke. James, not sleeping on the job, are we? I yawned slightly as I tried to formulate a lie. No, sir. Just, I was doing my rounds. Everything looks clear. Everything looks clear? Yes, sir. It all looks clear. <laughs> he laughed slightly before responding. And the basement? The basement? <laughs> Again, he laughs. James. He started. What did I ask you to do tonight? I shook my head. I know what he wants me to do. To check the basement. To check the basement. Bingo. And we both know that you haven't gone down there yet, have you? I tried my best to shake the slumber from my mind, but the confusion from being suddenly awoken was far too hard to hide. I suppose I... Look. He started, his voice sounding more aggravated as the conversation continued. We both know that you haven't been down to the basement yet, don't we? I shook my head defeated. No, sir. I have not. Thank you. Honesty. Really, James, I do love honesty. But do you know why I know that you haven't been down there yet? I'm sorry. I don't understand. <sighs> he sighed deeply, the long exhale growing deeper and strained as it rattled painfully against the inside of his throat. The basement. He said, his voice growing deep and harsh as the demonic sounds forced itself from the speaker and out, echoing through the room as the nasty noise caused me to sit upright in the chair. We know. He continued, his vocal morphing into a strained and guttural sound that played unpleasantly upon the ears. We know that you have not been down there yet. my heart. I could feel it. The force of it. The weight of it. It struck against me from that space within. Straining. Fading. The room spun as the light above me flickered slightly. <laughs> A crackle of laughter escaped the radio within my hand. The weight of it almost unrecognizable as the static meshed nicely with the unsettling noises coming from within my palm. Come and keep us company, James. We are all so cold down here. We could use your warmth. Horror. That was all that my mind kept coming back to. As the voice within my hand continued on as it spoke with my manager's voice, all that I could think about was horror. Not the feeling, not the notion, not even the word itself, but the actual genre of horror. He was right. Not the voice within my hand, not the demonic and dark charlatan which spoke with his tone, but the actual man who had spoken with me outside in the rain, my manager. Everything was here. The setting, the plot, the themes and characters. This may well have been a horror story. One in which I was the reluctant protagonist. I am nothing more than a two-dimensional character. But as much as I wish to pretend that these events were not happening, 
As much as I wished for myself to simply become a character in a story, a cheap vessel within a generic tale of nastiness, one with an obvious and predictable ending, I knew that unfortunately I could not. After all, this was real life, and the unreal was now beckoning me, commanding me, welcoming me. My fingers shook as I clicked the button on the radio. Who are you? Silence. Hello? Silence. Are you there? Silence. The sounds of my labored breath were cut short as the static hissed out once more, and the voice spoke again. The light above me flickered again and then slowly burnt into darkness. It's just you and us. A harsh layer of blackness fell across the room and spread throughout the long, long corridors of Drayton Pass. It moved out from inside of my room, out into the empty halls, past the turnings and around the corners, which I couldn't see lining the passageways with horrors while concealing any potential danger which may await me upon my escape. Darkness stretched the hallways to impossible lengths, pulling at them, tearing at them, as my sight betrayed me, and I fumbled with my torch within a panic. I knew that any road to the outside would be a long and terrible one. I was firmly within the shadows, in the center of the hospital, and I would have to venture into the unknown to get back out. The beam of light which forth burst from my torch was no longer reassuring. We have the house to ourselves. The last words from the radio faded out amongst a static mess of laughter <laughs> before finally fading out. After an eternity of nothing, I was left in silence, coated in darkness and stranded in nothing. Well, you wanted answers. The hallway outside of the door in front of me seemed to stretch on forever as I moved the beam from my torch. Here we go. I slowly moved forward, my hands shaking frantically as the beam of light once again danced with a spasm across the hallway before me. The sensation of deja vu was unsettling. 24 hours ago, I was standing in the same position, adrenaline ablaze, and my mind entangled in fear. But yet again, here I was, standing in the unknown, whilst trying to make out shapes within the dark. Why do you do this to yourself? My hand continued to move independently as the beam of light illuminated the particles of dust perfectly as they hung statically within the air. You're such an idiot. Tonight, Drayton had taken on a life of its own. The long abandoned halls of the building, the concrete, the stones, the brick and the mortar. Tonight, they all spoke. They whispered softly to me amongst the storm. The voice of the hospital clearly identifiable, even amongst the gust of wind, which made the way perfectly through the old and decaying window frames. The building howled relentlessly, a strong bellow of a call which seemed to echo my name from every corner, reaching out to me from within the dark, guiding me, steering me, whilst leading me onto the path which the old hospital whispered to me to take. I knew where it wanted me to be, but I knew that I could not relent. Somewhere below me, beneath my feet, and in a place unthinkable, was the basement. Something down there was waiting for me, hidden in a secret and shrouded in nothing, and it was calling for me. But I knew no matter the need for answers, I could not oblige whatever it was. Death was waiting for me. No more than mere mirrors beneath my tread, and like those who had come before me, I knew that I needed to make my choice. In that moment, 
I knew the type of character that I wished to be. Leave the house the first chance you get. As the thought solidified within my mind, my resolve strengthened, and the realization that the answers were not worth the price of admission intensified. I decided to simply run for it. I did not wait. I did not give it time, and I did not conform to the trope expected of those within my situation. I just ran. The light within my hand tore with a frenzied motion against the encroaching blackness as I pushed through the tight and terrible halls of the hospital. My chest strained and my thoughts burned. Get out now! This is too much! A flash of lightning smashed against the shadow of the halls as I moved, framing my escape in cliche fashion. It's not worth it. Do what you do best. Drift. Self-preservation was my motivation. My mind unthinking as I made the sharp turns. My brain empty as I negotiated the tight turns and hammered down the horrific halls. Nothing would stop me. This was my stop. And I would not be lingering on this journey any longer. But suddenly, my escape came to an abrupt conclusion. Where is it? It was gone. The doorway which I had entered through. The walls were a lie. Standing there, torch in hand, chest beating louder than that of any storm. I could see that there was no discernible trace that a doorway had ever existed within the framed stone walls which stood before me. Suddenly, I became aware of my hand as it trembled at my side. What is going on? The weight within my grasp was obvious as it hissed in disapproval. The radio once again lit up, its static and message a firm reminder that no matter my choice, I clearly was reduced to nothing more than a sum of my choices. I could run forever, but I could never escape my destiny. After all, my life was nothing more than a badly written story. The demonic voice growled with a fever from the device in my hand. Almost immediately, the abrasive noise of metal against metal forced itself violently out from the radio. The terrible tone tingling terrifyingly through the tense and torrid torment of the storm, which continued to lash heavily above my head. Going so soon. My heart skipped a beat. The noise has come from behind me. It's, it is behind me. Time slowed. Nothing made sense anymore. My life up until this point has been nothing short of a waste. I had been a creature, a being less than human, living in a world inhabited by things of which I had very little understanding. I was a hermit. I was a loner. I was a ghost. And I had lived my life as such. It had been a life not living, a life not truly alive, and I had been a soul without feeling. I hid, I had moved, and I had drifted, but that was all about to change. Here, within the prison of Drayton Pass, there would be no running, there would be no hiding, there would be no moving, there would be no drifting. As the sound of cold metal doors slowly opening behind me, echoed against the wall of my prison. I knew that I did not have a choice. There was no ground left anymore. There would be no more running. We are still waiting, James. Why don't you come down here and see us? Reality burned as the realization sank, unsettling in. There's no choice. Through all of my fighting, through all of my curiosity, through all of my hiding, my longing, and my need for answers, through all of it, through the conclusion of my life, my choices, and the consequences, the highs and lows, the inadequacies and confusions, through all of it, it had led me here, and it was here that I knew, as the metal door opened completely before me, welcoming me as it allowed the way down to the basement, that I knew that despite my reluctance, and despite all of my energy 
and my will to believe that I was anything, but I knew there was a truth that had always been there. I smiled as a tear fell from my eye. I took a step forward towards the door. I am nothing but a two-dimensional character. She kept talking through the hiss of the static in my hand as I tried my best to ignore her. My mother had always been judgmental of my choices. She had come from a strict Catholic background, and I guess you could say she always had a solid sense of ethics, ethics of which were just as unwavering as her desire to scold me. She had always been the same ever since I was a young boy, ever since my father left us, and I guess I always knew it would take more than death to truly slow her down. Mom, you died over ten years ago. I softly spoke through the radio, trying my best not to engage her in conversation. This isn't real. <sighs> she sighed noticeably through the static, her disappointment somehow stronger than the abrasive noise. Why could you not have been another boy? Why did you have to be you? You were such a disappointment, such a disgrace. We tried so hard with you, James. We both did. Until the point came when we could not stand your failure any longer. We could just not take your moaning, the whining, and your complaining. Such a frisky little thing. Life was always just a little bit too hard for you, wasn't it? You could not handle the challenge, could you? The conflict, the hardship, the work, anything. It was all just too much for you, wasn't it? Not like Mary's son, though. He was such a good boy. You were the reason your father left James. Did you know that? You're the reason your dad walked away. I'm ashamed of you, James. We both are. We are ashamed to call you our son. My hand shook slightly as I stood at the top of the stairs. Mom, you're dead. You can't hurt me anymore. The door had opened softly after I realized that the way out of Drayton had been taken. It had been removed, sealing me within a nightmare of my own design. Something was here tonight and it wanted to make sure I really felt my past, that I suffer, that it bled. The whining halls and cracked walls at Drayton Pass contained memories, echoes and thoughts, events and feelings. They strained under the weight of their own history, and tonight, through the whisper of wind, as it wound its way through the crack of the walls, it quickly became apparent that Drayton wanted to talk. However, tonight, as the rain continued to fall heavy from the sky above, and as my deceased mother continued her barrage, it was apparently clear that the walls, well, tonight, they were buckling under the weight of my history. You could not hurt me more than dying, James. Birthing you, that was worse than death. I took a moment to compose myself, looking down the darkened staircase that had revealed itself to me. Why are you doing this? <laughs> She laughed maniacally in response. Oh, my son. I think it's getting a little too hard for you again. Shouldn't you have already given up by now? Oh, wait. You can't, can you? You have no way out. You are stuck. You are trapped. Lost within your own memories and imprisoned by your own failures. You have really made a mess of this one, haven't you? Mary said it probably would have been better. He would not have gotten trapped in here, that's for sure. Did you know he's a lawyer now? Actually, do you know what? It has just occurred to me just how liberating it must be for you to be so useless. At least you have nobody who counts on you. Nobody to disappoint. Well, apart from your dear old mother, of course. Do not give her a reaction. It was too late. 
My fingers were already squeezing down heavily against the radio as she finished her insult. You are dead. You are ashes. And so are your words. You are nothing but dirt in the wind. This static hissed loudly in response before slowly, after a measure of silence, she carefully uttered her last retort. Mary, son, would not have said that. Enough with Mary's bloody son. I barely knew him when I was younger. He was just that weird kid down the road. He barely had any friends, and he was essentially, for lack of better words, a loser. I didn't even know what he did with himself after I moved away, but it is clear to me that Mary's son, for all intents and purposes tonight, well, he's having his reputation greatly exaggerated. Mom, for Christ's sake, just shut the hell up for once in your life. I mean, for once in your death. Whatever you are, just shut the hell up, please. I did not give two anythings for Mary's son. Nobody does. Not even Mary at this point. He is just a plot device to accelerate conflict, as are you. So take your wasted words and drift back to whatever corner of hell I sincerely hope you inhabit. Drayton stood still, surprised at my sudden outburst. The static within my hand continued, but no response came as the hospital seemed to sway in disapproval. Lightning struck heavy above. The clap of thunder which followed almost applauding the sudden appearance of my backbone. The interior of Drayton seemed to darken somewhat as the staircase in front of me pulled further down into the abyss, welcoming me into the blackness below. If I were to strain my ears with all of my energy and all of my imagination, I could almost make out three words drifting from the hell below. Climbing the stairs and hitting the walls, climbing up towards me in order to greet my ears in an unsettling fashion. We are waiting. At this point, the building was just taunting me. Of course, I knew that Drayton had always been waiting. I'd felt it the first night after all. I knew that amongst the cobwebs, hidden by the spiders and concealed within the darkness of its corners, that there was a truth that had been hidden patiently awaiting my presence but I also knew whilst looking down into the emptiness that awaited me below that whatever truth was whatever was hidden partially awaiting my arrival that whatever it was it was going to be messy my mouth opened and I allowed an attempt of self-awareness to come let's end this the radio hissed once again as my mother took a chance at a final insult I never thought I'd hear you say that Screw it. My manager had been trying to tell me the truth all along. He had exposed the ugly nature of it. What am I worth? Here I was, standing above an open doorway within an old abandoned hospital, in front of a staircase leading down to an obviously haunted or possessed basement, about to descend in search of a hidden truth that had physically manifested itself in the form of a haunting. You could not make this up. His words lingered as I took a step downward. I am disposable. I am a cliche. The encroaching shroud of impenetrable darkness barely registered as I continued to move down the stairs. You were no more than a character. I took another step down. A badly written character. And another. A tired and painful resolution awaits you at the bottom. And another. You have no depth. And one more. You are nothing special. It had all happened before, in countless movies, in countless stories, in countless television shows. It had been cemented within the genre. It had been tried and tested over countless years. The tale already existed, and it had existed for longer than time itself. And each time, the protagonist was always so predictable. His history was a question, but his path was obvious. At this point, you could easily predict his final destination, and that... As uncomfortable as a realization as it was, that, well, that was me. How depressing. Real life was no more than a story. My life clearly had no substance. The radio hissed again as I took my final step downwards. James. He began. What have I told you? Anyone but him. Mr. Clark, my teacher. You should have tried harder, James. Life is not always going to be easy. Somewhere above me, the ceiling rattled under the weight of the lightning strike. Bad things will happen if you don't apply yourself. 
things could not get any worse. This hospital had found its voice, and its tone had clearly drawn inspiration from my gag reel. The ghost of my past had come to play, and they were intent on staying until the early hours of the morning, to a certain degree. I could not really blame them, after all. With all the material they had at their disposal, there was so much to say. Thinking about quitting again, are we James? Mr. Clark had always been a stark individual, a man of dire intent, with an even dire advocating for education. He was the epitome of strict, a mess of rules wrapped in an aging, coffee-fueled mess of a man. I clearly didn't teach you anything, did I? My hand shook again as the anger consumed me. I must have missed a lesson on demon-infested basements, Mr. Clark. <laughs> he snickered a guttural laugh as the tone transformed to the hideous voice which had spoken with me before. The room before me steadily came into focus as the darkness allowed my eyes to adjust. Through the mist of blackness, a corridor appeared. The corridor was narrow in depth. As it was claustrophobic in height, the walls hugged nearly against my shoulders as the ceiling reminded me noticeably of its height. In front of me, the clot of nothing seemed to stretch on for an eternity. But somewhere further down, hidden within the shadow, I could just make out a door with caution. My legs moved forward as the radio continued to berate me. Through the constant torrent of noise, I could tell that Drayton had decided to forego any further luxuries. The voice of Mr. Clark had long been forgotten, and instead, the venomous and violent vocal of the horror communicated without restraint. We are all waiting for you down here, James. Our eyes have been removed, and our lips are so shut. It was all there, on top of me, and pushing me down, suffocating my will, and destroying my resolve. It was the terror. It had always been there, but it was only now, step by step, as I closed the distance towards the door, when I realized just how debilitating it really was. To think about it, I'd assume the sensation was born through the inception of the situation with Drayton, but within this basement, trapped by the rot and encased within the decay, I knew the terror it had been with me forever. It was the words of my mother, the put-downs, the disappointment. It was the absence of my father, the longing and wondering. It was Mr. Clark and his steadfast attitude, unable to distinguish the difference between a naughty child and a sad one. It was everything. It was my life, and it was my reality. The terror had followed me forever, and I'd grown accustomed to its touch. However, down within the foundation of Drayton, the terror within my core had been transformed. I couldn't feel it. No longer was it an anchor, a weight which weighed heavily upon my shoulders, but a doorway, a path, a pass, a terror I had felt for a lifetime. The terror which had guided me here was steadily being transformed. Although, amongst the horror and change, were born brand new as a guide, a hint and a driving force, which in that moment was guiding me ever closer to a resolution, one of which had been missing from my life for a countless number of years. My mother, my father, Mr. Clark, and so many others, their words lingered within my ears as I neared the old metal door and carefully pushed it open. Instantly, the sound of metal on metal filled the small hallway. The door was decrepit. The door was old. It was rusted within its frame, and its age spoke loudly. As I forcefully moved it open, and then slowly, I made my way into the cold embrace of the room beyond it. What have I done? The room had extended out about 15 or so meters before me. The space that was mostly consumed with archaic rubbish, and long forgotten remnants from a time of its use. Odd looking instruments lay forgotten on the table, and some lay empathetically upon the ground, each of them lingering way past their time. They were clearly of a medical variety, and even though the haze of black which seemed to hang around every corner of the small room, I could still see the clearly caked history of blood stained against the surfaces. 
On either side of the room were an array of numbered drawers built into the walls, each of them sealed with age and a heavy metal, concealing their contents from any eyes which may come prying. It was clear this room was different. It was clear that this room had been waiting. Why am I here? Almost instantly, as soon as the thought had materialized within my mind, a concerto of whispers broke the boundaries of the metal door lining each wall and filled the pitch black room with a haunting horrific rasps. You are here because you want to be here, James. The sudden break in silence caught me off guard as my heart began to race. You are home. Home? It was a construct that I have never really known. After all, I drifted. I drifted through school, I drifted through work, and I drifted through life. Nowhere on this entire planet, not within a social setting, a reliable job, or within a solid home had I ever actually felt truly at home. My entire life had been a story of horrors, and as I stood there, surrounded by this harsh whisper of nothing coming from within the walls, Somehow, the irony of it all was somehow too humorous to ignore. I get it, I spoke aloud, my voice carried against the hollow bricks, which held the despair firm. This is where I belong. Real life was random, real life rarely made sense, and real life was nothing but chance, events, and chaos. But my life was not a real life. It was so clear to me now, my life was nothing but a terribly written horror story. So a hidden meaning trapped within the basement seemed oddly appropriate as I stood within the darkness of Drayton Pass. I belong here. As the thought burned in my mind, an audible sound of creaking broke the silence of my thoughts. It was coming from one of the drawers. There it is. In front of me, about five or six meters to my right, one of the big metal doors fixed into the wall slowly began to open. The noise of its action grew in intensity as it gathered pace. The large solid door swung noisily against its hinges with a rust-ridden roar. And in that moment, all I could seem to do was watch. I simply watched as the door fell completely open, all by itself, and again, I just watched. I just watched as the gurney housed within the hole. Behind it, slowly began to pull itself free, and out from the crypt it had been housed within. It's time. I had come back here for answers. I had come back here for the truth. The hospital had always been here. It had always been waiting, and it had greeted me with a devilish glee the moment that I had re-entered its walls. The plot of my path had driven me here. It was always driving me here, and tonight, deep within the depths of Drayton Pass, to the serenade of the demonic laughter which echoed out from the remaining drawers, I took a step forward more carefully towards my resolution. The final act was here, and it was sitting on top of the gurney, which had pulled itself free from the space in the wall. The grand finale. The room exploded with a deep, disturbing chorus of cries as I moved towards the cold, metal-looking table. It is time, James. I moved closer. We are here for you. And another... We will cut you free. And one more. You are home. The paper shook in my hand as I retrieved it from the cold metal surface. With tears in my eyes, I read the sheet. No, this cannot be true. It was me, or more precisely, the document was about me. It was a patient registration form on it. Clear and crisp, unmistakable within the darkness, were my details. Dissociative tendencies, an unnatural interest in film and television, possible symptoms, a possible memory suspension, brought on from multiple instances of intense psychological abuse. James displays a disconnect from his peers, possible personality disorders present. The patient appears to form negative emotions through a narrative or a story which is clearly constructed to make sense of his suffering. Internal dialogue ongoing. Admission to Drayton Pass is recommended immediately. 
This cannot be happening. All around me, the hospital continued to laugh from the walls as it rejoiced at the revelation. Welcome home, James. Time slowed as the paper shook violently within my hands. This doesn't make any sense. I had memories. I remembered the advertisement. Unique position offered for unique individual. Night watchman required urgently five nights a week. The ability to work under your own initiative is a must, as this is a solitary work role. Submit your CV for consideration. I had chosen to respond. I had chosen to be here. Or had I? The memory seemed cloudy, almost as if I was remembering it from a book or a story. Some twisted tale that I had read long ago, standing within the cold basement as the ghost of Drayton continued to mock me. I found that I could no longer discern whether the thought within my mind was a recollection or just a story, a desperate tale thought up by a desperate individual who had somehow become lost within the rain. Without thinking, natural instinct took over and my legs began to move, just like always, just like so many times in my life when things got too hard. I did what I had grown accustomed to. I drifted. I drifted forcefully around. I drifted back up the stairs, and I drifted into the hollowed halls, Drayton, desperately seeking a light somewhere within the darkness. I ran, and then I ran some more, my legs moving violently under the weight of the truth, which seemed to be pursuing me down the empty cold halls. My mind became blank, and my body became unfeeling. I became a shell of a man, a deranged individual moving dangerously through the building, against the overtures of the storm raging above. Memories and thoughts, logic and reason, all of it had escaped me as I ran aimlessly through the halls of Drayton Pass. I had left my sins below. My sensibility had been destroyed by the basement, eradicated by words and destroyed by truth. Nothing within my world made sense anymore, and as I ran screaming through the desolate wings of the hospital, I knew that things would never be the same. The thought consumed me, and it blinded me. I never saw the bucket that still sat waiting patiently for me, hidden within the shadows of the floor, awaiting the approach of my stupidly stupid feet, carrying me stupidly through the night. And just like that, in an instance, I was falling. Gravity was peaceful. The fall was poetic. In that solitary moment, as my body drifted towards the ground, my mind was clean, and my fears were gone. The unexpected action of losing control was almost reassuring. For so long, I tried to rationalize that which had no rationale. I tried to make sense of everything, of my life, of my choices, of the events which had happened to me, of my past, and of my memories. But in that moment, as I flew gracefully towards the ground, I had never felt so free. The sensation, however, only lasted for a second. Almost instantly after came the pain. The air drained from my lungs, and I began to wheeze, exhausted on the ground. The sharp strain within my chest rattled, and the pain was uncomfortable, but it served its purpose. I didn't even notice the beam of light as it fell over me, the torch casting its reassuring glow across my body, cleansing my pain while destroying my fear. Sir, the young man spoke, the torch dancing with apprehension within his hand. I am the night watchman here. You cannot be here tonight. Do you have some place to go? Some place to go? The irony of his words burned through the night and ignited my thoughts. I barely even heard the voice against the radio as he called for assistance on his headset. Yes, he tripped over the bucket, sir. I don't know how long he's been here. I don't know. I think he's just a drifter. He looks like one. He's just a drifter, sir. A drifter. My story was coming to a close, and it was clear it would be ending in a poetic fashion. I had spent my whole life afraid. I had spent my whole life wandering the world, hiding and pretending. I had spent many years cowering, and I had spent many years running, running from the truth, and running from the realization that I had so desperately been trying to avoid. Through all my mistakes, through all my choices, and through all my misplaced actions, I was nothing but a cliché end to an obvious tale. Within life, we have our crosses to bear, 
In most cases, these crosses are no more than simply acknowledging the people that we are. I had tried to avoid the fact, to hide and cower away from the very knowledge that I was no more than a sum of my existence. We all like to think ourselves unique, but if the truth were to be told, there is always a label stuck on the back of our shirt. In that moment, I knew, without a shadow of a doubt, without even looking and without further contemplation, exactly what my label would read. After all, I was nothing more than a two-dimensional character, a loser, a drifter, and finally, after so many years, I was home.